I'm wondering about how my attachments are related to my need for control. Attachments to people and ideas and places. Well, you know what? Any attachment comes from fear. And any control gives us a fake sense of security. And we have to let all of that go. Because it's completely illusionary. And sometimes our ideas are so old and so fixed that they don't even belong to you. But because you know them and you've had them all your life, you feel safe with them. The minute you start defending an idea, the idea is finished. Because ideas are not experiential. The only truth is experiential. You know, this is why people have religious wars. Because it's based on an idea. And because if they don't defend their idea, they feel lost. They need that fanaticism. They need to be right. And it's not based in love. It's not based in God. It's based in insecurity. That's it. All ideas are like that. And if you believe in history, you can go back thousands of years. You know, when the world was flat. And if you went against that, you were killed. You were a witch. And some of the greatest scientists, the greatest philosophers had clarity that the world wasn't flat. And people are always that are advanced are always ostracized. And later they recognize. So the quicker you can let go of your ideas and evolve, you'll find freedom. So yes, all attachment comes from that. All control comes from that. It comes from complete insecurity. You know, they threw Buddha out of India. The Jews killed Jesus. And I can go on and on and on and on. So let go of your old ideas. The only thing of value is your experience. What is my experience? Is it the truth? Oh, it's my experience. It's my truth. But don't insist other people have the same experience. Or they agree. And if you're holding on to something, it's not based in love. There's a lot of insecurity. Que hmm? if to heal our stress, our grooves, we should get to the memory or the image of when we created our separation. You know, the creation of separation is just the creation of fear. And sometimes it's something very strong and very rational and very clear. And sometimes it's something very subtle because children are very sensitive. It's not about finding the cause. Because there's already a big crack in the base. And we're built on top of it. So there's not just the original break where we leave paradise. There's also the building that's on top. So we start to go in and the building starts to crumble. And we start to see what's real and what's not real. What's stress, 
what's belief systems, what we've done, how we've abandoned ourselves, trying to look for approval externally. And bit by bit, this old structure starts to fall. And we start to heal separation from self. And how do we do that? Well, we start to expand our consciousness. And once we expand our consciousness, we have the capacity to confront our fears, to feel our feelings, to speak our truth, to take off our social masks and start to love ourselves unconditionally. And all of this, as a consequence, heals the separation. Yeah, and this is a very um, explicit way of putting it. But it's not that factual, no? Because humans are very complicated. We have lots of emotions, lots of memories, lots of confusion. And maybe there is a principal stress that's so clear. I know my principal stress, but not everyone does. We can create fear through the most ridiculous things. It's just the creation of fear. And that's when we start to live in our intellects. We start to think about everything. We lose our innocence. We lose our spontaneity. That all happens as a consequence. And then, like she was saying, I followed all the rules. And then she got to the point that she could see we, she wasn't happy. And I think we all get to that point. And this is the base of the education system. Teaching children to be happy. Just to be happy. Not what they have to do, what they have to achieve. That happens naturally. Because people are naturally creative. In no matter what they're doing. If they've got love, they give 100%. But it doesn't have such a rigid structure. Hmm? What is strength? And what is compassion? I don't want to have, have a, a superficial concept about that. I want your depth, what you are teaching. Well, compassion is to know self. To know self without judgment. And with that, you can see yourself externally. But you know your own greatness. So you can pull people from the place of victim. That's compassion. It's not seeing people as victims, but as powerful creators. And it comes from your own empowerment. So once you find that internally, you perceive that externally. And compassion is open. It's unconditionally loving. It's patient in the sense that it will repeat and repeat and repeat and repeat because it's giving without conditions. Okay, it comes from abundance. And strength, I don't know specifically what you're referring to. You know, I think it's the strength to continue, to take responsibility, to look at yourself and stop looking externally, 
to walk towards, to heal separation, to take responsibility for everything that's transpiring in your universe so that you can heal it and not have any judgment. You know, where there's judgment, there's something internal. Always our biggest judgments are about ourselves. You know, we were talking about that in the meeting. Your most compli complex relationships that you perceive externally are always aspects of you that you don't want to look at. So we always look to heal. Always look to heal our interpersonal relationships with our family, with our parents, with our partners, with our children, because it's always us. And once you heal it, you'll see that with absolute clarity. And then the unconditional love will flow. Hmm? That takes courage. You know, self-realization takes courage. Because you have to look at yourself. My uh, question is why, if it's such a wonderful system, it's not, it not taught in different countries in the world? In the school, the children in the schools. Okay, well, we have an educative system that we really want to implement in schools. Obviously, there was a little bit of delay with the COVID situation. But we're very focused on that happening. But we want to teach little kids <coughs> through the teachers. And we absolutely wish to arm an educative system. We're focused on doing a movie at the moment, an animated movie, that we can explain how the system is or the focus of the system. We've done pilot projects. Now all we need is funding and the people that want to do it. Because we're more than open, more than open to take this into the schools. And I think it's absolutely vital. We have to start with little kids because they're naturally already the system. And if we start here, we change everything. We change the parents, we change the brothers and sisters. Everything starts to evolve. But it has to be implemented through the teachers. So we need to start teaching the te teachers. Good, I'm glad you're enjoying it. Great. I have a relationship of 30 years ma marriage. At the beginning, a lot of excitation. It was the princess dream, the dress, as all that. But I don't know how goes transforming that love. I don't know how to continue, but without that exaltation. After 30 years? You want to feel exaltation? <laughs> How can be transformed? I know I love him. But I don't know how to live in plenitude. I do. It comes from within you. And that has to be what's fulfilling you. You know, love isn't all romance and flowers. It's a relationship a communication 
the capacity to grow, to support each other, it for intimacy. It's not for what you felt the first year. It just doesn't. It's not. That's not love. That's hormones. Eh? And if you're trying to recapture something from the past, you'll never do it. You have to construct on what you have. Something more mature. Something more beautiful. More intimate. But that feeling, that... <gasps> I can't imagine after 30 years anyone has that. No one I know, for sure. What? So you need to take responsibility for your discontent and really look at it. Am I in this relationship? Because I feel safe. Is this what I want? Is what I think I want worth letting go of this? Or is it more important that I just heal myself and love myself and focus on me and grow? And maybe things will change externally. But they're going to be more mature. They're not going to go back. Okay, you have to have clarity. You know, to be with someone for 30 years... That's a long time. It's a very long time. I'm sure there's a lot of love. But I think you need to go a bit deeper, no? Mm? A bit deeper. Expansion of consciousness, you explained in December when I came, <laughs> that it was an expansion and then happens a contraction, and then expands again, and then contracts again. And my question is, those expansions and contractions stop at some point? Or how, how ends in the enlightenment? Stopping expanding consciousness? Or how is that part? I'm not very clear with that. When you first start healing, you start to have feelings of internal peace, yeah? Okay, and you sit there and you're happy and joyful and enjoying everything. And then you contract. And when you contract, it's the end of the world, the system doesn't work. It's never going to help me. I'm the worst. Oh, I'm never. I'm so depressed. I've never stopped crying. And then a wet few days later, you're expanded again. Okay, so there's expansion, contraction, stabilization. A next step: expansion, contraction, stabilization. And at one point, relatively rapidly, I assume or hope, you go into perpetual consciousness. That means no matter what's happening on the surface, and you can still expand and contract, but you have this underlying feeling that everything's okay. You have that consciousness and it's perpetual. And then it keeps going. You keep growing and growing and growing. And at some point, that moves into everything. And then the energy keeps growing because it's eternal, it's infinite. But the contractions, no. Or if there is, it's just nothing. Yeah? But, you know, it's a process. This is a very fast process. And the facets are very strong. 
you know, they seem so simple, little innocent things, but they're not. Hmm? You're welcome. I'm in an important contraction. And it's like, I'm in this circle. And I think I'm doing the best I can. No, you're not. No. You know why? You have an expectation of how you need to look. You're not surrendered to your process. And you're suffering. Because you're, not, you're just not being there. Okay, I'll give you an example. If you break your leg, okay, and they put a cast on it, no? Okay. You have to stay still, no? You can't go and play tennis. You can't go running around the block. You have to be careful, no? You have to be there. You have to be gentle. You have to have people supporting you. Okay? That's the initial stress. Then they take the, the gesso off, no? But you're still not 100%. You have days when you feel good, oh, and then it's a bit cold and you feel bad. And you do a bit of rehabilitation. And you have good days and you have bad days. Because it's something you can see, it's okay. You're not fighting against it. You're not ringing the physiotherapist saying... It should be healed. I should feel better. It should be stronger. Or maybe you do. I don't know. But you, then he says, no, you've got to be patient. It's going to take time. You know, you're healing. And you think, oh, okay. And bit by bit, you, may, you get better and better and better. Okay? This is emotional healing. And you've just broken. And now you're letting everything go and you're starting to rebuild. But in this moment, the bone's still knitting. It's still healing. So it doesn't feel like it did before. Okay, and it's going to take time. But you surrender to this. But to your emotional healing, you don't surrender. You just keep complaining. In fact, you're even complaining on the camera. <laughs> and because of that, you're suffering. You just have to let go. That's it. Because there's nothing you can do. It is what it is. It's moving how it moves. And you can be sick of it. But you still have the gesso on. And that, there's nothing you can do. You have to look for support. And that's it. Is this clear? Very good. Ishani, please. Gracias. Come visit our webpage for books, movies, and our wonderful retreat centers. Isha's simple yet powerful system is transforming lives around the world.